So we have learned about the different parts of the tongue, the surfaces of the tongue, and the papilla about the anterior two third, about the posterior one third, the lingual tonsil, and the arches and the folds. Okay. Uh, now I want to tell you about the muscles of the tongue, but before that, uh, information is the tongue is divided into two halves by a median fibrous septum that is situated uh, interiorly. And due to the presence of that fibrous septum, a furrow is situated in the dorsal surface. Okay, there is the median furrow in the dorsal aspect of the tongue. And four pairs of extrinsic muscles and intrinsic muscles are present. Uh, that means uh, four extrinsic muscles in present in the left side and four extrinsic muscles in present in the right side. And like this, the four intrinsic muscles are present in the left side and four intrinsic muscles are present in the right side. The actual name of the uh, muscles are same but in case of left side you have to use the term left, in case of right side you have to use the term right. Okay, at first we look the intrinsic muscles of the tongue. Why they are called the intrinsic muscle? Because their origin and insertion sites are within the tongue. Okay, uh, for this reason they alter the shape of the tongue. And what are those muscles? One is the superior longitudinal muscle. Here, these fibers are the superior longitudinal muscle fibers. And these are the right and left superior longitudinal muscle. Okay. And another one is the inferior longitudinal muscle. Here, this area. And this is also the right and left inferior longitudinal muscle. And the superior longitudinal muscle, it will arise from the median fibrous septum and insert on either side of the tongue near the margin. So on contraction of this muscle, they make the dorsal surface concave from side to side. Again about the inferior longitudinal muscle, this muscle arises from the side of the tongue and insert into the median fibrous septum on both sides. So for the contraction of the inferior longitudinal muscles, the dorsal surface become more convex. Another muscle is the vertical muscle. Here from above downwards, these are the vertical muscles. Okay, They arise from the dorsum of the tongue, traverse the genioglossus muscles and insert on either side of the tongue. And if this muscle contract, it will flatten the tongue, isn't it? And another muscle is the transverse muscle. This transverse muscle is not seen in the sagittal section. It can be seen in the coronal section. Okay, It will arise from the median septum, go on either side, uh, traversing the extrinsic muscles and insert on the side of the tongue. So if this muscle contract, it will narrow the tongue or make the tongue elongated. And I want to mention you that all the intrinsic muscles are innervated by the hypoglossal nerve that is the 12th cranial nerve. Now we will learn about the extrinsic muscles. Why they are called extrinsic? Because they attach the tongue to the outside the structure, outside the bony landmark that is the mandible, the palate, the hyoid bone and the styloid process. The extrinsic muscles attaches the tongue to mandible by genioglossus, to palate by palatoglossus, to styloid process by styloglossus and to hyoid bone by hyoglossus. My dear students, here for you I have uh, dissected this tongue more deeply and uh, to show you the intrinsic muscles okay just look at here i think you can tell the name uh, you are looking that here at the top region it is the superior longitudinal muscle just look at here here in the top area it is the superior longitudinal muscle okay here these are the vertical muscles in this area from here to here the inferior longitudinal muscle is situated and if I perform the coronal section, then I can see the transverse muscle. Okay, my dear students, we can uh, see the intrinsic muscle in another model. Here, yeah, just look at here. I think you can tell it by yourself now. What is the name of this muscle? Yes, it is the superior longitudinal uh, of the right side. Okay, what is the name of this muscle? Yes, it is the inferior longitudinal muscle of the right side. What are the name of these muscles? Yes, these are the vertical muscles of the right side. Okay. 
my dear students now we will see the extrinsic muscles one by one at first the genioglossus muscle yes uh, from the name we can assume that this muscle will start from the genial tubercle of the mandible situated in this region yeah this is the mandible body of the mandible cut section behind it and below there are genial tubercles from the genial tubercles this genioglossus muscle will arise and it will go up to the tongue the greek glossi mean the tongue so it will be termed as the genioglossus muscle the upper fibers of the genioglossus muscle will insert uh, in the inter uh, ventral surface and the lower fibers will insert into the hyoid bone okay what will be the function of this fan shaped muscle genioglossus muscle as it come from front so if it contract it will pull the tongue towards its origin that is the front side okay that mean it protrude the tongue okay but uh, there is a matter that if the both sided genioglossus muscle contract then that will protrude the tongue but if only one sided genioglossus contract then what will happen then it will deviate the tongue towards the opposite side why because uh, in a classroom active student uh, always try to uh, displace the uh, position of the inactive one isn't it in a football uh, ground what uh, will you see that uh, active player will displace the position of the inactive player isn't it so if the uh, left sided genioglossus contract then the left half of the uh, tongue will protrude and it will displace the right half that means it will deviate the tongue to the opposite side and if the right sided genioglossus contract only the single sided genioglossus contract right sided genioglossus contract then it will uh, deviate the tongue to the left side you have to know this to learn about the lesion of the hypoglossal nerve in your practicing life when you will become a neurologist okay the genioglossus is also termed as the septi muscle of the tongue why because it hold the tongue in such a position uh, so that it cannot fall back up to the respiratory tract here this one is the nasal cavity uh, okay uh, here is the posterior nasal aperture here is the nasopharynx then the oropharynx so what will happen if the tongue will fall back uh, up to this oropharynx uh, along with the soft palate okay and then the respiratory passage will be blocked isn't it so the genioglossus is also called the septi muscle of the tongue because it prevent the falling back of the tongue up to the respiratory tract the another extrinsic muscle is the styloglossus muscle this muscle will arise from the tip of the styloid process and adjoint stylohyoid ligament and coming downward and forward and insert on each side of the posterior aspect of the tongue this one is the styloglossus muscle but styloid process is not uh, shown here uh, here the lower portion of the styloglossus muscle is shown as because it come from above and back side so it will uh, when it contracts it will pull the tongue upward and posteriorly another muscle is the palatoglossus muscle here this one is the soft palate so one muscle will come from here from this region and insert on either side of the tongue yes and this palatoglossus muscle will come from the aponeurosis of the palate and insert on both side of the tongue so when this palatoglossus muscle will contract then it will pull the root of the tongue upward and close the door between the oral cavity and the oropharynx okay so when it contracts it will close the door in front of the oropharynx and all the extrinsic muscles of the tongue except the palatoglossus will supplied by the hypoglossal nerve another muscle is the hyoglossus yes this muscle will arise from the hyoid bone from the name we can easily tell that and will insert on the posterior aspect of the both side of the tongue okay as this muscle come from below so when it contracts it will depress the both side of the tongue downwards and make the upper surface more convex and all the extrinsic muscles of the tongue will be innervated by the hypoglossal nerve except the palatoglossus muscle that will be innervated by the vago accessory complex through the pharyngeal plexus so ultimately all the muscles of the tongue will be innervated by the hypoglossal nerve except the palatoglossus muscle palatoglossus actually the muscle of the soft palate and when we read about the soft palate muscle we will again learn about the palatoglossus muscle there thank you for watching thank you very much